Welcome to Pro Tour Reviews. What I have for you today is Milwaukee's 2827 M18 Fuel 20 inch chainsaw. This is a dual battery saw. It's supposed to have the power of a 70cc gas saw. Let's open this box and check it out. Here's the saw. Nice rubber overmold on the back D grip here. It does have a integrated safety into the handle. So you push this forward, then you can pull the trigger. It is a variable speed trigger, so you can speed it up, slow it down with that trigger. Also, it does come with modes. So we click this button on the top here, we can cycle between two modes. One mode gives you about 4.4 um, horsepower. That would be your standard running mode. The other mode gives you 5.8 horsepower. Reason why that matters is this. If we get into cutting some tougher material, maybe harder wood, you're gonna switch it to the upper mode, the 5.8. So what's gonna happen though, it's gonna demand more power from uh, more power from those batteries. So you're gonna consume your batteries faster. You're also gonna heat up your saw a little bit more. Now, once you're done with that harder material, go back to your standard mode. You're gonna extend your run time and also run the tool cooler. So again, that's just right at the tip of your finger. Right here, you'll be able to reach up in there and adjust that. Uh, our battery ports are on the top of the saw. So these click on simply as this. Slide them into position. You do need both batteries in order to use a saw. So both batteries are required. If you forget, it actually reminds you right on the top of the saw. So both saws are, uh, both batteries are required. It does have the inertia brake here. So just like you're used to on any other gas powered saw or other battery powered saws, the brake right here works the same way. So clicks forward and then you can pull it back to reset. It does have a metal front plate, protect the tool. And also what I really like are these dual metal bucks, uh, bucking strips. So now these are integrated on both sides of the bar um, and they're large. You can press up against those, definitely get a bite into material that you're cutting. Uh, furthermore, let's see, we have our blade cover here. All right, I'm sorry, our, our guard. And to remove that, we have these nuts, we'll loosen these guys. What I like about these, they are captured. Captured meaning that you can't lose them. So uh, nothing worse than losing your nuts out on the field um, on a tool like this. So really important, um, capture nuts, keep them where you need them. So here's our bar. It is a roller tip on here, so it does have a ball bearing tip. Um, what we're gonna do is put our chain on the bar first. And being that the lettering is that way, we're gonna put our chain on in this direction so that as the chain is running, it's spinning this way. So make sure you always put the chain on facing the right direction so you, you're ready to go once you get it all tensioned up. So that sits on the bar like that. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna line up my bar on top of here like this. I'm gonna make sure my chain gets around around the sprocket and make sure everything stays in the grooves where it's supposed to and it should sit on there just like that. And what we're doing is we're lining up right on the bar to the pin, the adjustment pin, pin for tension. And then once we have this in place, we have the chain seated in the sprocket, the drive sprocket, we can go ahead and put our cover back on. Thumb tighten these, these nuts just to keep the bar in place. And then, because we have this handy dandy tool integrated into the base, pop our tool out. And as you can see, we have some slack, not too much, it's actually pretty close. What I'm gonna do is add just a little bit more tension on here. The way we do that is we adjust the tension by simply just turning this screw. So it gives you directions right here on the front of the saw where you need to turn that. I'm gonna turn that a little bit, check our tension, turn it a little more, check our tension and smidgen more, I think that's about good. One other thing that I did like on this as well is we have this little removable filter, metal filter up here in the, the base of the handle. What that's for is the, that's where the air intake is for the motor. Remember when you're doing uh, work with a chainsaw, a lot of dust and debris, and we don't want any of that getting up into the motor, the brushless motor up inside of the saw. So what you can do is periodically take these off, blow them out, reinstall those. Uh, again, it comes with a flat blade screwdriver tip on there, so we have the tool in the bottom of the saw, be able to remove those and blow those off really easily. Uh, keeping your brushless motor cool is critical also to longevity and performance, so you wanna wanna do that. Now, as far as performance goes, as soon as you hit the trigger, it's up to speed within a second. So 
that's fast. No needing to rev it up, no re needing to do anything to get it ready. You hit the trigger, pretty much you're ready to cut. And speaking of cutting, I have a project planned out. We're going to try this on. Uh, involves cutting some oak, and uh, let's go give it a shot. So what you just saw was some footage of us using this saw out on a little project here at our shop. That branch range anywhere from about this big down to about this big. Um, so, and it's oak. So which is, if you've ever cut oak, it's a heavy, heavy wood. Um, it always amazes me how much a small chunk of that actually weighs because we just had to pick it up and put it in the truck and move it. Uh, but that being said, this saw both in high speed and the lower speed, both were able to get through the material without issue. Um, I did notice on lower speed that I had a, I, I wouldn't say baby it, but I did have to go a little bit slower when I was cutting the large, large chunks. Now on high speed, you can, you can push right through that. Uh, I was able to let the saw work at its own pace, which is actually a pretty quick pace. The bucking bars here actually work phenomenal. Um, just the fact where they, they just bite into the wood and allow you to just tilt into it and cut through with really great ease. Again, the factory chain that comes on here is, is an excellent chain as well. Um, amazing chip removal. Uh, I think you see that in the video as well, where it's just throwing the chips out. Uh, never once did it get clogged up with chips or anything. Um, I did notice that it was oiling just fine. Uh, if I spin this around, I did have the reservoir completely full and it used about half of a reservoir for what we cut. I did cut through a whole set of batteries. So um, the cuts we were doing was enough to use up one set of batteries. Uh, I didn't keep track of anything there, but uh, was able to get our tasks done without having to go and get them recharged. Um, it was right at the very end when I noticed we were down to one bar. So I uh, was really happy about that as well. Um, as far as balance though, the saw is not a light saw. It comes in with the two batteries installed, just shy of actually 21 pounds. So uh, it, is, it is heavy, but it's balanced well. If you notice when I pick up the saw from the center handle here, the saw is balanced. So your, your front hand on the front handle here is carrying most of the weight and your rear handle is using to maneuver the saw and operate it. Uh, the trigger safety works fantastic, very simple, uh, easy to do. I had gloves on the whole time and was able to manipulate the saw without issue, including changing the speeds. Um, and also I was curious if the wrench was gonna stay in place and it did, it didn't fall out, didn't, didn't move at all. So it was nice to see that. Uh, and as you can see, it is clean inside of there. All the chips evacuate out. Nothing got clogged up inside of the guard here, which is good as well. Overall, fantastic saw. Uh, really happy with what we were able to do with it here on site. Um, I think it's an easy saw to recommend in that you're going to be able to power through whatever you need to do. And if you're looking to transition from a gas to electric, this could be a saw for you, especially if you've invested in the Milwaukee uh, lineup. So if you already have other Milwaukee M18 tools, this would be a logical choice for you. Now, it's not inexpensive though. So this goes for $8.99 at Acme, but that is a kit. So you're getting two batteries, that simultaneous charger and the saw. Uh, and you can get that online and anywhere that they sell uh, Milwaukee tools. Um, I am curious, what are your thoughts on this saw? What battery powered uh, chainsaws are you using? And I'm interested in if you're using bigger saws that are you know, 20 inch bars like this one. Drop me a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our next video. And as always, thanks for watching.